Here at Santa Pod's Ultimate Street Car event for round four of the 2018 Front Wheel Drive Drag Series. This is the UK's biggest show and go modified car event and is a great fit for the Front Wheel Drive Drag Series. Spread over two days, we have three scheduled qualifying rounds on day one, with a final qualifier on day two before we move into eliminations. The forecast for the weather is very hot indeed, with expected highs approaching 30 degrees, this could pose problems both in terms of engine performance and traction. So into Q1 then, Phil Reeves in the right lane in the Fiesta and Danny Hyman in the left lane with the Dove Shack Racing VW. Normally a four wheel drive car, Danny drops the rear prop shaft when entering this class. And looking good for Phil here, that's a 9.58 at 155 miles per hour. That's just outside personal best level for him. Alan Duffy in the right lane, Peter Cole in the left lane with the Renault. Both cars away smoothly, while well, Peter has had so many problems with the Renault over the past years. Looking like a good opening pass here, but unfortunately no times recorded due to a computer glitch. Such a shame for him. Next pair, it's Dougie Gemmell in the right lane, Ray Saunders in the left lane, both in Honda Civics. Both of these cars are still early in their development process, but looking good here. Up to the strike they go. That's a 10.68 for Ray, though with a very low terminal speed, and a 10.77 for Dougie. Final pair, it's Andy Nichols in the left lane, Dan Frost in the right lane. Dan Civic is a proven mid nine second runner, but this is only the second full event for Andy's new ride. Amazingly though, he's taken the number one spot at the moment with that fantastic 9.54 just ahead of Phil Reeves. Yeah, so it was pretty good. Uh, it was a 9.58, uh, my PB is 9.56. Uh, it was a little bit over the lighting board, so we thought it was a 9.9 at first, so no one really got that excited. Um, the downside to it was uh, I damaged the shifter mechanism inside the gearbox, so we've just taken the turbo off, trying to find out what's wrong with it. So I'm second place at the moment. Uh, I'd like to try and get first, um, just for the points. But yeah, so I think it's going to turn up a little bit more and give it another go. The, the initial start of the run was fine, got to fourth gear and it, it wouldn't select fourth, so we're guessing it's a selector, we're now adjusting it to hopefully on the next run get fourth gear, it should be a good pull. Burnout was fine, 60 foot was good, um, just the fourth gear, we had to go through in third gear and roll through the line really. Well, Peter Cole and Alan Duffy seem to be puzzling over the Renault's engine bay, and don't forget that neither of these cars got a time recorded. Yeah, I mean, I've had a bit of bother with the gearbox uh, all year. We went back to the old F28 gearbox there, and uh, we put in a decent run there. I thought it was quite good. It hooked up nicely, and it performed well to come back to the pits, and the timing gear didn't work. So, But we've got some data. We've uh, checked it over and uh, put a wee bit more boost in here and there, and hopefully throughout the weekend we'll um, keep going. Yeah, yeah, we're getting there now. Um, like I say, we're getting to grips with the ECU. Uh, the engine always usually all right. It's just the transmission side. I went back to what I, the box I know works at the moment. Uh, so we'll just keep progressing. The mapper's here today. Uh, great help from him. Uh, so hopefully we can go forward and try and get back into nines. So on to Q2, but Ray Saunders still puzzling over his transmission. And with Phil Reeves also with transmission problems, coupled with the high temperatures, only a few cars have elected to come out. Peter Cole doesn't seem to have made the call, so this run will see Dougie Gemmell in the right lane against Alan Duffy in the left lane with the Corsa. Alan all the way down from Scotland for this weekend, and at least he is now qualified in the field. Danny Hyman, the only other driver to take to the track for this session, is way off his usual pace compared to when the car is set up in four-wheel drive mode. 
Finally, this is Chris Sutton. He was entered for the event but had issues in scrutineering. So he'll have to make do with putting in a few out of competition test runs today. Back in the pits and Pete Cole is still hard at work. But a good result for Andy Nichols. Did a bit of testing last round. Going quite well. Didn't expect to do a good time today. I think at the minute we're number one qualifier with a 9.5 so it's a PB so it's a win-win you can only come to pod and run a PB the 1560 foot which is good for us but not good compared to some of the lads that have run 1.3s 1.4s but you know 1.5 is good for us and uh, I think we can start getting a bit more mile per hour and we start putting a bit more boost into it we'll just hopefully run a bit later on tonight and see if I mean it might still be too hot but we'll give it a run see we are we've got a qualifier tonight one in the morning hopefully we can knock another bit more off the 9.5 well in the cool of the evening both Andy and Phil Reeves did improve their times a PB for Phil in the Mark II Fiesta XR2 moved him into number one spot at the moment running a 9.49 at 154 miles per hour but Andy Nichol then went even quicker in the Battleship Grey Honda to retake the number one qualifying spot, 9.46 at 158. It's uh, 9.49, um, another PB. It's absolutely brilliant. It's all working to go. It was all going to plan. The track was really good. Um, yeah, it just, it just worked for once. Does it make a big difference on this car with the temperature? Because it's going to be very hot again today. So I'm quite lucky. Um, it's only sort of 700 horsepower, so it's not that much heat under the bonnet. Um, track's good for heat, but the car-wise, now we're okay with it. So on to a hot and sunny Sunday morning for the final qualifying session, but it looks to be game over for Pete Cole. To cut it short, the Woodruff key went on the crankshaft, so that's game over. That throws the timing out and everything else, so the engine has to come apart to put a new Woodruff key in. Well, I know that you've been working on this for many years. You would desperately like it to actually prove that it can be that fast. We know it can, but there's always something there. I get the impression that this motor is just not really up to it. So what are your future plans? Are you starting to think about other options, aren't you? Yeah, I'm thinking about either a Honda or a Vauxhall or a Mitsubishi Eclipse be one of them three next for next year. Alan Duffy, right lane, Dan Frost in the left lane. Dan Civic is a consistent nine second car and Alan also ran a great 9.68 in last night's session. Both cars fairly even in the first half of the track with the Honda pulling away towards the finish. A 9.70 for Dan and a much slower 10.78 for Alan. Danny Hyman in the left lane. Ray Saunders in the right lane with the Civic. And look at that reaction time for Ray. His car always launches noticeably quicker than every other competitor but still looks to be having gear selector problems and not able to shift into fourth. A very low terminal speed there. So no challenge to the front runners from either of those two on that run. Phil Reeves in the left lane, Dougie Gemmell in the right lane. Now Phil is looking to take number one spot back from Andy Nichols. With the odd number of competitors, it means that the number one qualifier will get a bye run in the first round. But no, he seems to be off the power before the end. Has he got problems? Good run for Dougie though, a 10-10, not far off the nines now. And finally, Andy Nichols, already number one qualifier, so he gets the bye in round one. Well, that was strange. It looked like he was driving straight towards the Christmas tree, but the car seemed to keep driving. Very strange. So to close out the session, another out of competition run for Chris Sutton, this time up against the most unlikely drag car ever, the hugely heavy all-steel long wheelbase Chevy Crew Cab. Rear wheel drive and probably five times the engine size of Chris's car. Where else would you see that match up except on a drag strip? Yeah, it's um, got sort of half track. I just wanted to just ease off a little bit, just to keep everything safe, because, uh, yeah, just to save the poor little thing. Um, so car-wise, I'm really happy with it. Uh, I'm not going to do anything between the next round and this one. Uh, up against Danny, so, uh, yeah, I'll see how it goes. But anything can happen in drag racing, so I'm not taking anything for granted at all. And a change from four to two-wheel drive for Danny Hyman. Yeah, it's not going too bad. We're dropping down to the 10.7. Um, in four-wheel drive, we do go into the uh, low nines, but obviously we're just trying to tweak the car a little bit more to get a bit of traction. 
We've got a bit too much power in it still, so we're just spinning the whole court at the moment, but it's not going too bad. It obviously then makes quite a big difference, so I guess you've got suspension changes as well, which you can't change too much because the car is set up for its regular racing class, isn't it? Yeah, we, all we really do is stiffen up the rear shocks, and that's about it, put a bit more load onto the front, and uh, it, it, it's not going too bad. So a look at the final qualifying table shows Pete Cole not qualified. Phil Reeves in number two spot and top placing going to Andy Nichols, but it looks like he could have problems after that last run. Just went sideways off the line towards the tree, so I backed out of it. I don't know, uh, don't know what it is. Yeah, everything looks to be okay, but it isn't going straight, which is what you need for drag racing. So we're just trying to see if we can find. Normally, the shaft breaks when it does that, but the shafts are fine. Steering rack arms, bottom arms, I can't see anything at the minute what's causing it unless there's something with a diff inside. But when you're slow pushing it around the pits it should still turn, it's not doing, I don't know. Not what? sure yet. And so finally it's time for the all important round one of eliminations. First pairing sees Ray Saunders in the left lane and Alan Duffy in the right lane. Ray again away from the line first and pulling out a lead over Alan and holding on to it till the stripe, winning with a 10.61 to a losing 11.25. And remember, no fourth gear for Ray at the moment. Danny Hyman in the right lane, Phil Reeves in the left lane. This should be an easy one for Phil on paper, but anything can and often does happen. But it looks like he's got it well under control by 100 feet out, holding on to the lead to take the win with a great 9.53 at 153 miles per hour to a losing 11. Dan Frost in the right lane, Dougie Gemmell in the left lane. Dougie's getting close to the nines now, so what can we do this time? Dougie gets the better reaction time and holds on to the lead at half track, but the Fix Auto Civic of Dan Frost is reeling him in, and at the stripe he takes the win, but not by much. A 9.60 beats a 10.38. It was the start line reaction that made that so close. And so finally, it's Andy Nichols on a solo. He just has to break the beams to take the win. Guessing he still has a problem with his steering here, and he will have an opponent in the semi-final, so he needs to get that problem sorted. So, as the afternoon heat builds, a few overseas front-wheel drive guests take to the track to try for PBs. There is no other track in Europe this good that they can drive on, so they love to come over to this event. And a slow pushback to the pits for Andy Nichols. Didn't quite go according to plan. Something simple caused a problem. Yeah, we got off the line all right. Uh, first gear, second gear was fine. And the third gear, we put a wee bit more boost into the third gear yesterday for this run. Uh, and we just popped the boost hose off of the throttle body there. So obviously no boost, third and fourth. So puts us out. So go put it back together and see if we can join on at the end of the lads and do another few runs. But today, didn't go the way you wanted in terms of winning the round, but in terms of performance on the car, it's going the right way. The car's running fantastic this weekend. Like I said, all we've changed is the clutch, played a little bit about with the boost. Um, it went a 10-7 off the trailer with the mischief, so, and we've got a 10-1 this morning with dropping boost in each gear. So once I get that, you know, get that how I want it to go, um, get that perfect, I think we'll see a nine today. So we're going to tag on to the back of the sessions and push for that. Getting ready for the semis now, and everyone has to help out in the Reeves pit. It's a full family affair, and I guess that's part of the enjoyment of racing in this class. Yeah, it is really good. Uh, it is grassroots, uh, and everyone has to chip in, otherwise it can't work. Um, like I said, I can't do anything about my missus. She's absolutely brilliant, really helps out. Uh, my best mate, Graham, he does an awful lot too, because uh, it was a weekend. And then my boss, at Jezza Horsham Developments, uh, for all the mapping, yeah, it's really good. Um, but the best sponsor we've got on so far is uh, TTV Racing, who sort me out of a clutch and flywheel. Um, and it's absolutely brilliant, it sort of saved the weekend, really. Semi-finals then, and it's Phil Reeves in the left-hand lane taking on Ray Saunders in the right lane. Well, it's even off the line. 
but Phil is pulling out a commanding lead by half track. I bet he's after another PB here. Yes, he takes the win with a 940 at 151 miles per hour. Dan Frost in the right lane against the wounded Civic of Andy Nichols. No burnout for Andy, so obviously not solved the problem yet. Andy takes the green light for the points, but the win and the place in the final going to Dan Frost. The time for Dan, a 9.78, and that sets up our final. Back in Dan's pit, that's previous winner Paul Atkinson working on the generator and still putting his new engine together. So the plan is? Yeah, to be out at Jap Show next round. Um, the engine's built, the gearbox is built, just got to put it all together and get it in the car, which if the head would have come a couple of weeks earlier, I'd probably be at this event, but there's nothing I can do about shipping from the States, really. Now, we've seen you taking part in another motorsport, a slightly different sort of level and class of engines, so what's the story behind that? Yeah, just a top fuel dragster. Um, crew for them, do the head for um, Duncan Mikolaf. Um, yeah, it's been an interesting year. We won the champ European Championship last year, and then uh, this year's just not got off to the best of start, but he's still up there. So a few more out of competition test runs for drivers while we wait for the final. This is Alan Duffy here and Dougie Gemmel, and almost into the nines for Dougie, but in the pits it looks like there may be problems for Phil Reeves. And yes, only Dan Frost has made it down for the final. So it looks like Dan will be taking his second round win of the year. He doesn't really need to try in this one. But try he is crossing the line with a 9.69 at 151 miles per hour. Well, it had been a brilliant weekend up till then. Seemed to be absolutely ready for it before the final, but you didn't come round. There was a bit of a problem in the semi-final. Yeah, I think on that last one with a 9-4 dead, I warped the cylinder head. Worst case, I've cracked it. Um, so cylinder number one was just filling up full of water. So sort of decided against running it, sadly. Yeah, real good result, um, considering the heat as well. It's been very hot this weekend, so I've been struggling with the intake temps, but all good. The car proves that it's consistent, it's just I don't think the driver is very consistent. <laughs> so with just one round to go, it's looking very close at the top of the table, with just 80 points separating the two. So join us at the Jap Show finale here at Santapod in September to see what happens.